Now, how many of y'all have heard of Herb Welch? I'm betting a few of you might have, but probably not a lot. So for those of you who haven't, I'm about to introduce you to an underappreciated forefather of American streamer fishing, next on Savage Flies. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So about Herb Welch, he was from Maine. He ran a shop on Haynes Landing up on Mooselik McGuntic Lake. Now I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I'm pronouncing it phonetically. It's an Algonquin word in the Abenaki language, which literally means moose feeding place. And the lake is in Western Maine in the Rangeley region. And it's actually at the Northern tip of the Appalachian Trail. Same Appalachian Trail that we hike and fish down here in Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina. So why do I say Herb Welch could be considered a forefather of American streamer fishing, or at least New England streamers? Well, he started tying them in the 1920s, and this was even before Kerry Stevens up there. He came up with this pattern maybe sometime in the late teens or, or early 20s. It didn't really take off. I mean, there were some variants of it, but it kind of got popularized when he had somebody tying it at a show in 1927. It caught on up there and got pretty popular. And in fact, it's a pretty popular streamer throughout the world. I mean, you could go to just about any enclave of fly fishermen or fly tires and say, hey, have you heard of Herb Welch? Folks might say, mm, sounds familiar, but I'm not really sure. But if you say, have you ever heard of the Black Ghost? People are gonna say, oh yeah. Now, one other thing before we get into today's tie, I read about the pattern in Joseph Bates' Streamer Fly Tying and Fishing. This was recommended by Bob, also from up in Maine, and this is a great book. Any streamer junkies out there, if you like these classic patterns and like learning a little bit of history, look for a copy of this book. So about the black ghost pattern, what really makes it a black ghost, and this is my opinion here, is a black body with a silver rib with yellow for the tail and the throat, and then a big white wing. Now, Herb originally tied it with white hackle feathers for the wing, but there are lots of variations out there with either a marabou or even a bucktail for the wing. But I think as long as you have these color combinations, it's still pretty much a black ghost. Now, there are no advanced techniques on this pattern. I think a lot of new fly tires will be able to handle it with a little bit of practice, but it is a feather wing streamer and they can be a little bit tricky. But I do have a couple of tips that I think might help a new tire. But it's an effective pattern. It's a beautiful fly. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the Black Ghost, a true classic streamer. Now, one thing to keep in mind that hair wing streamers are not the easiest flies to tie. One of the goals is always to keep your, your feathers in the plane of the hook. So take a look at this one, looking directly under the hook, and those feathers, they're pretty much straight up and down. So this one's gonna have a decent profile. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these white feathers on this one are probably just a little bit longer than they should be. Now, I did that because this is a 5X long hook, and usually these are tied on a seven extra long. I don't have a seven extra long, so I'm doing it on a, a five X. And, you know, so I made the feathers longer on purpose. But keeping that in mind, this fly may foul up a little more often than if you were tying it on a seven extra long hook. So just a, a trade off. I'm using black 70 denier and I'm gonna put a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Now the tail on this guy, yellow, yellow hackle fibers. And this is a cheap, strong saddle hackle. So I'll pull some of these out, and just try to keep, keep the tips lined up and then just break it off. And it's a pretty sparse tail. It, it's kind of long, but not, not real thick. So maybe a little bit more than a hook gap. Let's try right there, see what we have. I'm gonna put a couple of wraps and then take a look at it. Okay, is it coming off the top? Yeah, I think we're fine right there. So a couple more wraps to lock it. Now let's tie in our rib. Rib on this, just a medium silver tinsel. If you see, let's see, I, I cut this, I tried to cut it at just a, a slight, you know, tip point right there and catch it in with the silver side down right back here where we're gonna make this first wrap. So cutting it with that little angle, it might help to minimize your thread wraps right back here. Then again, it might not have made much of a difference at all. But 
we'll see. Okay, so I put a few extra wraps, and what I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna snip off the little curlies on that, because that will possibly, you know, create a little bit of a lump. So we've got that. Now I might be able to, if I'm lucky, just a few wraps right here and smooth out that taper. Or so, or make it a taper so that you don't have a big lump step down. Let's go ahead and take our thread back up to the, to the front. I'm gonna put a half hitch in it because I am gonna use my rotary on this one. I don't often when I'm tying a video, but in this case, I'm going to. So I'm gonna pull this rib back, park it with my magnet, just to get it out of the way. Now I'm gonna put my rotary function, my rotary, you know, uh, bobbin hole cradle right here. So keep in mind that this Regal is not a true rotary. So I'm gonna to have to adjust this in the hook, so, or in the vise, so my hook is kind of in the, the axis of rotation right there. And you know what, I forgot to put my black floss in. You know, I always forget something. So this one, the last fly I just did, I used a uni single strand. And this one, I'm gonna try something a little different. This is a Danville and it's a four strand. So four strand rayon, we'll see if this one works any better. It might, and it might just be a big mess. We'll see. So let's catch this in right here. Pull it back a little bit, okay two or three wraps there, and now's when I need my half hitch. So I've got an extra one in there, not a big deal. Let's put one right now. Now I can part my thread in the bobbin cradle, and I'm gonna spin this around. So this is my me using the rotary function right here. And what you'll wanna do before doing it, before spinning it, just try to keep this flat. And about every five or six rotations you might need to flatten it back out again so let's see how it does see it's kind of uh, coming apart on me so maybe this four strand is not the way to go but I think we're gonna make it work so just take it all the way back then be careful with the point of your hook back here now it's spreading out on me which I did not want that to do so maybe the four strand was not the best choice Let's try to get that bunch back up and now flatten it out again. Already this body is just a little bit lumpy. Let's see if we can compensate going back up. So watch the point of your hook, take it all the way back. Now I'm gonna just try and keep this flat as I take it all the way back up front. Okay, not a perfect body, but you know what? This is not a presentation fly. This is a fishing fly. All right, let's catch this off right here. So what do you think? Did this four strand work okay? Um, maybe, maybe we would have been better off sticking with that uni single strand. Or I guess what would have been even better is if I'd had a black silk. That would have probably gone on much smoother. But I don't have a black silk, so I'm tying it with what I got. Okay, now let's just wrap this rib. Your preference here um, in the spacing, I think on this size hook, probably seven wraps is gonna look about right. Just whatever you think looks good. Okay, I think that's enough right there. Let's catch this off with a couple of wraps. Snip this excess. Now let's put the hook back in here. How we want to tie. Okay, a few extra wraps, locking that tinsel in. And now we're ready for the, the throat. That same hackle fiber. Now you have a couple options here. You can just take a big bunch of them, tie it in as a beard, or you know, you can get a little crazy and then just put a few wraps as a collar hackle and then push them down. So let's try that. I saw Barry or Clark do it this way and of course his flies always look amazing. We'll see how this one turns out. Okay, got that caught in and you can tell, you know, this is a, a pretty low quality strung saddle hackle so it's not 
the, the highest quality. If I had a nice whiting um, hack, a cape or saddle and, and yellow, sure, it would look great. But I don't, I, this is what I've got, and I think we're gonna be able to make it work. Okay, I wasn't counting, that's at least three wraps, it might have been four. Let's go ahead and catch this off. And it's gonna look pretty sparse, but remember we're gonna push it down and bunch it all up in just a second. So let's cut this excess off right there. And just try to pull these to the side. And then pull them down like I'm doing right there. And I'm gonna take a few wraps going back. And we'll see how that does. Is it gonna stay on the bottom? Nah, close enough. We might have been better off just tying it in as a throat, but I think that's fine. Okay, now this is probably what takes the longest part of this fly is picking your your feathers for the wing. Remember I said a feather wing streamers are a little bit challenging. So here's what I did. I just, I pulled four feathers off of a, you know, strong saddle hackle, um, cut them pretty short. And then when I laid them down together, I put a drop of UV resin right there where the feather fibers meet the stem and then put it under the light. So these are all stuck together. I did this before I tie them in, and now, with any luck, they will stay right on top of the hook where I want them. So let's just do a couple of loose to medium wraps right there and, and take a look. Okay, I think that's fine, but they might be riding just a little bit low, so let's see if we can pull them up just a little bit without mangling them up. Okay, looks good on this side, but look at the other side, and they're kind of covering the body. So I'm gonna back this off just a little bit, and then try to rearrange them. And now, let's see what we got. Okay, I think that's gonna look a little bit better right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of tight wraps right here before I snip these off, these front butt ends right here and now go ahead and finish it up or if you want to put jungle cock eyes on it go ahead and do it I do have a jungle cock so I'm going to but if you don't yeah finish your fly right now build a big head and put some head cement on it but I'm going to put these on I think they'd look cool when you can and I've seen them tied with the, the eyes a little bit up or with them just, you know, parallel to the, the hook. I like them going a little bit up, if I can do that. So let's go right there for this side. Now let's do this one on my side. Okay, I think that's fine right there. It might not be up as much as the, the other one. So a small little tug and we can adjust that. All right, now we've got the stems for these jungle cock eyes. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Then we can work on our head. Okay, I think we're in fine shape now. Let's take our thread back up to the eye and then just ramp it back up. And it's a streamer, so don't be afraid to, to put a big head on it. I think um, we're gonna be fine right there. Maybe, let's go one more wrap back. And then a few extra wraps right here. I don't want it to be a tiny head. Okay, I think we're ready to whip finish it and then see if we have any cleanup. Now one trick I just recently realized, if you're having a problem leaving a little bit of thread when you trim off your, um, trim it off at the end, just find where it's coming out perpendicular to the hook. You know, it might want to spin it around a little bit. And then if you can find where it's coming out perpendicular, just put your scissors in right there. And if you're lucky, you don't leave much of a, a tag hanging down. So for cleanup on this one, I think we're fine. I'm gonna put a drop of head cement and this is going in my box. 
So that's it everybody, pretty classic American streamer. Fun to tie, looks really good through the water. I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.